Alrighty, so welcome back. In this video, we're going to get started by building our flow. So I'm here on the home page, and I'm going to click the gear icon in the top right and press setup. And then in the quick find on the left, I'm going to type in flows. And then I'll select flows once it shows up. And we're just going to build a new flow. So I'm going to press new flow. And I hope you've been paying attention, but which flow should we select? Which flow type? If you said record trigger flow, then that means you're awake. Good job. We'll press create. And we have to configure our start screen right away. So let's ask you another question. Which object should we build our flow on? And again, I hope that uh, popped in your head right away. It's the object we built our uh, pick list on, and that would be the task object. And so we'll select task. And what do you think we should configure the trigger as? Should we do created, updated, created or updated? I'm going to select uh, created or update, updated. Um, my reasoning for that is that, you know, conceivably, the record could be created with a value in that pick list. And so in that scenario, we would want the flow to run. Um, instead of the task assigning to whoever created the record, we would want it to just go to the pick list. Or if that task gets updated with that pick list being changed, I would want the flow to run as well. So now we need to set some entry conditions. And we haven't done this uh, together before, or well, we did in the potential value, we, we added that filter, but we're gonna add some conditions here. And I think, um, well, I'm gonna build the conditions so that we can experience a bug together later. But I want you to think about what I'm leaving out of the conditions that will cause the bug. So to start, I will just say um, that the assigned coordinator is changed. And we'll do true. So I'm going to click that really fast. I picked the field assigned coordinator out of all the fields on the task because that's the field that's uh, changing when Sherry and her team are updating tasks. And then I get a bunch of operators to choose from, so I could you know, fire this only if the assigned coordinator equals, you know, and we could manually type in Bob Apples, I could do that. And you see we have these other operators. So I could say does not equal Bob Apples, starts with Bob Apples, or maybe just starts with Bob. Like if we had two Bobs in there and we, we only wanted it to start with that, um, or we only wanted to trigger the flow when the, the value started with Bob, we could do that. We could do ends with and do apples. So then it would be either Tina or Bob apples. Um, and you kind of get the picture. We'll, we'll try to use as many of these as we can throughout the course and uh, get experience with them. For now, I'll just do is changed. And we need to enter a valid, valid value when we do that. And in this case, it's a true or false. So we'll say that the assigned coordinator is changed true. Uh, here, we are not going to be updating related records, so I'll optimize for fast field updates and press done. So we get our auto layout on the flow, and the, the flow, um, I always like to visualize kind of what the flow is doing. So in Salesforce, if we picture this in our minds, some user just was on a task object and they just changed the assigned coordinator uh, field. So the first thing we need to do is you know, get the value of uh, that field and use it to look up a user. And we're going to do that with a get element. So we talked about this, you know, many lectures ago, but we will use the get element and we'll click add element and we'll scroll down and, and select get. And we're going to say get user. And I'll name it a little bit better, get user in pick list. Again, the importance of descriptive naming. And we're going to get records of this object, and we need to get the user record. And so I'm going to select user. So I typed in user here, and this is the list of all objects, and I'm just selecting user. And so what we're doing is we're, we're going to search the value of the pick list against the first and last name of all the users in Salesforce to see if we can find a match. So which users do we want to find? We want to find those users where the first name and I'm going to add a condition and the last name selecting that equals. Um, well, actually, I, I guess we just want the full name, right? Maybe not the first and last name. So let's see if there's a full name on the user. Okay. So when I type in name, we see 
maybe midway down, there's a field called full name. So we'll select that and we'll delete out this second condition so that we have one condition that we're filtering for where the name equals, and now we just need to get our pick list value. So I'm gonna select uh, enter value or resource, and then I'm gonna scroll down. And just as we did in a, in a prior lecture with the opportunity, um, we're gonna use the global variable for the task. And so just as a refresher, Salesforce provides this global variable in um, record triggered flows, and this will represent whichever task is the one responsible for triggering um, the flow or entering the flow, so to speak. So we'll select record, and then I can select the assigned coordinator field here. And you see that field's available. So I'll click that. And now uh, our get records is basically set up. It says, hey, you know, when the assigned coordinator changes, that's our start element, then it will go down to the get records. It'll say, now go find the user whose name equals that assigned coordinator. Down here at the bottom in the get records, I'm going to say only the first record that you find is a match, and then just store uh, all the fields automatically. And this is the option I, I typically pick. Um, it's enabled by default, but it just makes everything easier. We'll press done. And now that I have that on the canvas, I'm going to press save. I always like to save my work early and often. I've had uh, hours of work disappear into the ether because I didn't save and my computer, you know, Windows decided it was a good time to do updates or something. So um, yes, saving the flow. The name naming convention is really important. I always like to do the object name first, followed by a dash with a description of what the flow is doing. And I like to keep that description short and sweet. So I'll say change owner to assigned coordinator. And that's a pretty good description, kind of lets you know what the flow is doing when you're just looking at it on that list. And that's what I'm visualizing is that uh, this list here, it will grow very quickly, um, especially nowadays where the only automation tool is flows. You might have 300 things in this list. And you know, <laughs> if it just says like the default names from Salesforce are, are not that great in my opinion, um, I guess they're not horrible, but if it just says cancel item flow, like what object is that firing on? Um, you know, like what sorts of situations is it going to be canceled for? What items are we canceling? Are those opportunities? Are those tasks? We don't really know. And so um, once this list is 300 items long, I like to have the descriptive names in here. So I'll press save and we'll end this lecture there because uh, in the next lecture, we're going to build out um, the updates to the task. So now that we've gotten this user, we can go on to update the owner with it. And we'll do that in the next lecture.